is dawn and it's, um, what day is it? Hold on a second. Um, it is Thursday, October 27th at 2.33 p.m. And um, let me take these out. I can just talk here. I think this is working. You guys, um, so I just had the, um, I, was, I was recording poems earlier this morning, which you may see me wearing the same thing in some of the poem videos. And then I took a break, went and met a good friend for lunch and uh, came back here. It's beautiful. The geese are out. Um, and uh, it's a beautiful day. Uh, you know, gosh, late fall and it's still just really gorgeous here in North Georgia. So uh, to the point, I just had the, um, wow, whoosh, <laughs> the whoosh, like go now. Uh, a serious download to come out here and record um, to share with you a passage from the Bible. I'm always a little trepidatious. I know that's not a word, but I make it up. Um, so anyway, I'm a little bit, little. I do this with trepidation because, you know, I do come from a, a very strong um, a Christian background and I have a very close relationship with Jesus who speaks with me often and um, and has, has been a huge part of my own um, healing journey and my twin flame path and pretty much everything in my life and um, my trip to France last year, which relates to this. So I'm getting ready to go back to France, uh, south of France. Um, actually, we'll be interior this time, so um, looking forward to that. But um, some things were activated when I was there um, in March, late March, spring equinox um, of last year. I went to some places. I'll be sharing about that more in the screenplay I write and some other things to be released at a later date. But um, suffice it to say that some things were set into motion then and some things began in earnest then that um, I just right now, as in, you know, like 30 minutes ago, just was shown, <laughs> the geese, uh, was shown that uh, I need to circle back and um, get a thread. And I'm going to share... Uh, with you, sorry, I'm just like all over the place. I'm gonna I'm gonna read this passage that they asked me to read. I haven't even read it yet, um, but it's from First Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, it is the Apostle Paul writing um, about uh, some from his own point of view about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, and so, without comment, let me read that and then I'll circle back. Okay. So this is First Corinthians chapter 15. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, that's Peter, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as one, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead, but he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then, all, then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost." If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ will all will be made alive. 
but each in turn. Christ, the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. Now if there is no resurrection, what will those do who are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized for them? And as for us, why do we endanger ourselves every hour? I face death every day, yes, just as surely as I boast about you in Christ Jesus our Lord. If I fought wild beefs, beasts in Ephesus with no more than human hopes, what have I gained? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning, for there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish! What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. What you sow you do not plant in the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies, but the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind, and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, and the stars another, and star differs from star in splendor. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the imperishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor, labor in the Lord is not in vain. That uh, was from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and uh, that is uh, the Apostle Paul writing in his most eloquent fashion um, to the church at Corinth. Um, I'll save the commentary and, and other uh, sorts of biblical um, pieces there. I don't, I'm actually not the expert at that anyway, but, um, but um, I just want us to, oh, I see exactly why I was called to read that. I hadn't even looked at it uh, until I just read it to you from uh, online. And 
uh, I knew it was about the resurrection. Um, that much I knew, and I, I think I understand why I was. I, I just was uh, guided so directly to record this today. Um, it's wow. It's now it's 2:44 p.m. as I'm speaking, and it is um, again October 27th. So I have. Um, I have, and I've heard many other uh, individuals in the Twin Flame community that I have run across, and also more broadly, talk about you know the next few months here and moving into the early part of 2017. Um, I have my own, um, uh, I suppose you would call them visions that um, were given to me regarding um, later in November, and certainly a lot is happening in our world right now. Um, and a lot is happening internally. A lot is happening for the Earth herself, for this beautiful planet, which we call our home. And um, I really see that the energies are shifting, and I feel it. And I feel that perhaps um, what we can take from what I just read to you about the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and Paul's way of seeing that, uh, is is quite important, I think, right now. So I invite you to go read that chapter yourself. Uh, you know, set aside for a moment uh, what you believe about Jesus the man and the resurrection even, or uh, just set that aside and simply read this again and consider the idea of the earthly and the heavenly, the body and the, the, the human form, the body, um, bodily nature, our human nature, and our spiritual nature. And in particular, I'd like for those of you at, on this channel to really consider that in terms of your um, your journey, um, Sacred Union Path, um, and what that might uh, be saying to you. Um, I may come back um, and record a separate video, uh, but I think I'm going to leave it at that for today. Um, much love.